I'm Megan Knetzer, one of the spine nurses here at WatchU, and we've put together this series of videos to help prepare patients for their upcoming spine surgery. Today's video is going to focus on smoking and nicotine cessation and why it's important that we stop those things in the setting of a spinal surgery. The information that's provided here is not meant to replace discussing with your primary care doctor, so just be sure to talk to them if you're planning on making any major health changes. Guidelines for WashU orthospine are that we do not routinely operate on patients who are using nicotine products. There are several reasons for this that we'll go into in a couple of minutes, but your surgeon is going to expect you to stop nicotine prior to having spine surgery. In general, the recommendations are that patients be off nicotine for six weeks and have a clean nicotine test prior to scheduling their elective surgery. There are case-by-case -case basis in which this may not apply, especially in situations that are considered urgent or emergent, but you should definitely discuss your nicotine usage with your surgeon or their team prior to scheduling your surgery. Why do we want patients to quit? What's the problem here? Well, the reason we want patients to quit is because it increases the risk of complications. Specifically, in patients who are undergoing a spinal fusion, meaning that you're getting screws, rods, instrumentation put in, the problem with nicotine is that it keeps the bones from growing together and keeps them from fusing together the way that they need to for surgery to be successful. In the long run, if the bone doesn't fuse together, that could lead to screws and rods being pulled out or broken. It can increase the risk of fractures of the bones in the back, so it can be a big problem. Even if you're not having a spinal fusion, for any patient who's using nicotine products, that raises the risk of a surgical site infection. It leads to delayed wound healing. It can increase the chances of other complications like a dehiscence, which is where the skin opens up or the muscle, you know, the tissues underneath open up. Um, and all of those things can be a big problem. If you get an infection in the spine, that could lead to multiple trips to the operating room. It could require IV antibiotics or a lifetime of oral antibiotics. So it can be a big deal. The other thing to be aware of, even if you haven't had a fusion, is that nicotine products make the spine degenerate faster than it otherwise would have. So if you've had a decompression or a discectomy and you already have some degenerative kind of changes and arthritis in the back, the nicotine products can accelerate that and make it happen faster and be more severe. If you have had a fusion, that could lead to the levels adjacent to that fusion above or below wearing out faster than they otherwise would have. And that could lead to a need for additional surgery to extend your fusion up or down. So those degenerative changes that are worse in nicotine users can be a big problem for patients as well. The last thing to be aware of is that if you're having a front of the neck surgery done, like an anterior cervical discectomy and fusion or an anterior cervical disc replacement, that using nicotine products can increase the risk of dysphagia. Dysphagia is difficulty swallowing after the surgery. And a lot of patients get it because we have to move the throat contents over to the side to do the surgery. But in patients who smoke or use nicotine products, Dysphagia is more prevalent, meaning it happens more often, and it tends to be more severe. So that can be a big problem for patients as well. So now that we, you know we want you to quit, how do you go about doing that? Most patients are going to tell us that they want to quit cold turkey. They just stop the nicotine and um, just stop cold turkey. The problem with that, though, is that only 7 to 8% of attempts with cold turkey are successful. So 92 to 93% of patients are not going to be able to do that. Another option is nicotine replacement. So using gums, lozenges, uh, nicotine patches, or e-cigarettes with you know, decreasing levels of nicotine over time. And these tend to be more successful than quitting cold turkey, but they do take a little bit longer. Another option is prescription medications. Chantix is a medication that's specifically designed to stop patients or to help patients stop smoking. That's its only purpose. Uh, Wellbutrin is an antidepressant that is FDA approved for nicotine cessation. So that can also be helpful. And there are some other medications that are occasionally used as well. 
behavioral support includes things like counseling, um, group sessions, therapy, hypnosis, having some social support and some behavioral health support can be really helpful in quitting because it is a tough process. And for most people, it's not only just stopping the nicotine, but also altering their lifestyle to accommodate that. The best way of quitting though, the one that has the most evidence for being successful is to combine medications and behavioral health options. So getting some counseling in addition to the medications or doing a group support setting um, in addition to over-the-counter or prescription meds. One of the ways to help plan for success is to use what's called the STAR method. So STAR is to set a quick date as soon as possible is best. There's no medical benefit to waiting and you're just gonna psych yourself out if you wait um, weeks to stop quitting. So set a date, make it soon. You're gonna tell others about quitting and ask for support. People really want to be supportive of you and they want you not only to get the surgery, but also to be healthy in your life. And so, you know, if you tell others about it, you're more likely to have good accountability and they're gonna offer their help and support to you. The A is for anticipate challenges, especially in the first few weeks. You're going to have cravings, you're going to have temptations and times when you wanna go back to smoking or using other nicotine products, that's really normal and everybody has it. So you need to plan ahead for those challenges, making sure that you have um, a distraction available to you or a plan for what you're gonna do when that craving hits. Maybe it's a piece of gum, maybe it's um, calling a friend or a crossword puzzle or whatever is interesting for you, but you need to have a plan and anticipate those challenges. R is for removing nicotine from the environment. So throw the nicotine products away. Don't even keep them in the house. Um, you know, uh, stop smoking in places that you know you'll be after the surgery. So if you get in your car, you know, two weeks after quitting and it always smells like smoke, it's going to kind of take you back and make you want to start smoking again. So stop smoking in the house, stop smoking in the car, get used to being in those places without having the nicotine with you. And then think about ways again to replace that nicotine if you can chew gum instead or take a drink of water or um, something else that's not nicotine that's going to be available to you within that environment. And then the last thing is to ask for help. Most patients are not able to quit without having some kind of support. So we have some resources available within our department of orthopedic surgery. We have the Living Well Center and they're a great resource for nicotine cessation. They offer online group um, counseling. They offer medications. They offer one-on-one -on -one support. So that's a really great resource for patients who are interested in quitting, especially for patients that have orthopedic issues. Um, and you can find more information about that on our website at ortho.wistel.edu. You can and should always talk to your primary care doctor. They definitely want you to stop smoking and they're gonna have a list of resources that are available to you within your community to stop. So reach out to your primary care doctor, let them know that you're interested in quitting and they'll help you along the way. The Missouri Tobacco Quit Line number is here for you, 1-800-QUIT-NOW. They offer telephone support, texting support. They have a quit smoking packet that they can send to you. So good resource for patients who live in Missouri. For patients who live in Illinois, the tobacco quit line is gonna be 1-866-QUIT-YES. The Illinois line does offer free nicotine replacement products to patients who qualify. Um, so gums, lozenges, and patches, and they also offer telephone and text support. So good resource again for patients that live in Illinois. And then there is a smartphone app called smokefree.gov. You go to that website, you can download that app and it can be right there on your phone because we always have our phones available to us. So those are some of the resources that are out there for patients. Um, the thing to keep in mind again is that we do want you to be successful, that we want you to, to be able to stop smoking, to be able to get the surgery and to have it work. So thanks for listening today.